Welcome back everyone. This is our self-installation guide to the Osiri Tabarak system. We've been, this is a new revamp update. We're combining the previous two uh, videos into one video that is hopefully going to be a little bit more detailed and uh, concise and fit into a shorter period with the same amount of information. This is uh, all brought to you due to PPPD, PPD performance. Their website is listed there. They all deal with all four drive modification needs and camping products via Canyon Off-Road. So go and see them and check them out. They have a lot of gear there. And if you use our code word, you can uh, look at a discount when it comes to some of their products if you're coming through our system. Now, to, uh, just before this goes up, there'll be a little, we do have product reviews coming forward as well as a later strip I'll put in the description. Uh, depending on when this video, when you see this video, some of this stuff may already be there. So have a look at our list of videos and they may already be there. I uh, also want to bring your attention to this uh, particular graph here is the fact that we really want you to subscribe because most people that watch our videos, as you can see, 92% don't actually subscribe, but still watch all our videos. So we encourage you, if you do like our stuff to watch, uh, sorry, to subscribe. Um, as when we hit a thousand subscribers, we'll be doing a prize package giveaway. So that's something to look forward to. We also want to say a big thank you to our Patreon members. We had two that just recently joined up. And if you're interested in looking at Patreon and what that involves and what benefits you get as a result of that, there is a link in the description as well as more importantly, how it helps us continue to produce these videos, go on trips and uh, provide uh, this content. So this is uh, the Osri tail rack spread out. So the arrows are pointing to, first of all, those were the arching arms. Up the back there is the back portion. So the, those two arrows now indicating the side rails. So there's four different side rails. That's the back of the, uh, the tub rack. So it's pretty self-explanatory. And then you have the four different uh, brackets points. So they're all, once you see it all, it's all pretty sanded. In the middle is indicating the LED lights and then the packet of bolts that you get with it. And the packet of bolts you get here. Yeah. Now this is the instructions that come with the uh, with the system when I got here. I don't know if they've changed it since because I have updated the instructions myself and I will list in the description of this video a link to the instructions that I've done. These are the old ones, so I'll link to you a description, sorry, a link to uh, the new instructions. So if you want to follow those instructions, that will make your job a lot easier. Uh, so go into a lot of detail about what you actually get inside there, how many types of bolts you get, um, how many nuts you have, washers, and especially the bolts and bolt sizes that go in for the bracket points. So that's just a little snippet, um, and you can pause here if you want to have a look. That actually tells you, that's that's a bit of my own um, instruction guide there that shows you what you need is required and what's really recommended um, to make your job easier. And there's also, here's just an image of a still shot of some of the things that you make, that you're going to need to make uh, to be able to put this thing together. So, and also we've got a couple of shots of some of the items. So these are the washers, because you get two different size washers. You get two different size bolts so the bigger ones, uh, so the ones to the left hand side were the ones you use the majority of the time. The two other sides were for brackets. Um, you'd want to use sockets when you can rather than spanners only because the space that you have is limited and you'll see that later. Two different size uh, nuts there and uh, you can either use, sometimes you use a shifter or nuts. This is the foam uh, that you ask specifically if you ask for it, it's good that you get because you can put it underneath uh, if you don't get it ask for it you put it underneath your bracket to stop it um, affecting the paint um, when you place the brackets on the actual tub itself especially with corrugation so the first step really is to remove anything that the tub rack is going to be in contact with so I've removed the bars from mine mine also had a soft cover so I've had them to remove the clip-on portions. So this will be varying depending upon the model of vehicle that you have as to what you need to take off. You may not need to take off as much as I do um, or less or more. So it just depends. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm doing this carefully because I'm keeping this because later on you see, I actually uh, adjust my soft cover so that I can, I, I put, I can put it back 
back on once I finish. So that's the old bars and that's the old soft cover once it's removed. Um, and as you can see, there's I've, I've kept all the bits uh, for the soft cover so it can attach back on if I want to use it. But this is my plan is to cover the uh, tub rack with this custom canvas design. So I'll be doing that soon, but at the moment it's not. So what happens now? Yes, so building it uh, together. So generally you start, uh, as per their instructions, it's a good idea to start with the rear section first. So as the arrow is pointing, first it pointed at the back portion, which is easily distinguished by the lights. The two arrows to the side, that's indicating the two L-shaped portions, which you have four of, so it's really simple and, and basic to under, understand which parts are where. That blue arrow was pointing towards one of the brackets. And here you can see uh, that arrow is indicating to show you that I'm actually, you can slide those sort of L-shaped bracket portions so that you can change the width of those um, bars across depending on your tub width. So that can be changed. And each and every screw needs to either be uh, WD'd or, or greased um, before you do before you place it on. And then you put a washer, um, put it through the, the gap, and then you hand tighten it. So as you can see, there's only a few nuts and bolts put on that. This is just so I can gauge it. So I've, I'll stick it up here. The, yellow, the you know, arrows are pointing towards one where it goes to the top one and uh, the other one was, was to the side. It's not really where I wanted to be. So you can move those side sections to make it longer or shorter depending upon what you're doing. So at the moment, I'm adding extra screws or tightening screws up to make sure, because I'm happy with the width. As you see that arrow that I'm pointing to at the moment, that's that shape that's like that. It only has one bolt holding that in place at the moment and then one bolt further up the top that's holding it in place um, and that attaches to the bracket. So this is adding extra because you've got one, you, you add bolts both sides and later on you, I'll show you um, what it looks like complete. So here what I'm doing is I'm using the side railing and the front bracket because the front bracket on my one, I was able to use a pre-established drill hole to measure out the distance. And now I'm marking the holes uh, for the brackets as it's sitting. And I also double check with the ruler before I go ahead and drill the holes to make sure that I'm getting it correct. So regardless of how you go about establishing where to drill, double check with the ruler, it's always a good idea because I don't want to drill excessive amount of holes if you don't have to. So that's the way I, I chose to do, go about um, getting mine sorted. And mine's just different just because it had a pre-established hole up the front. And that's why that is, you can see um, my body's blocking it, but uh, there's a bracket that's actually attached that's only screwed in by a portion. This is here is just to show you the foam padding because uh, I put this in later. So that's why most of this is constructed already, but this is just to show you, because I'll put this in afterwards. Um, so do this at the start, put this foam padding in, and uh, you should be able to get it when you get it. So you just peel it off, it sticks to the surface, and then you can um, basically continue as is and it won't damage it. Here I'm showing you, like when you make, sh when you drill your holes and you place your brackets, make sure that you've got room to get access to these bolts. And you saw me stick some cardboard up, and I'll have some photos in a minute here. And I'm using a socket there. So this is that foam stuff I'm talking about. It's sticky bit. Um, but yeah, I used, and yeah, you put underneath the, the, the um, each bracket point. But these are what I'm talking about there. In the corner sections can be really problematic. You have a limited amount of room as the metal curves around, and there's often gaps in there where it's quite easy to drop bolts or nuts into those gaps. So I found it was easy to stick cardboard in like this, as you can see in this picture, um, so that if I dropped any nuts, they don't fall down the gap and I lose them all together because you only have a limited number and you don't want to waste them 
essentially you have four of the 40 mil long bolts and eight of this of the uh, longer versions now this is uh, I'm bolting it down to the tub itself properly so rather than just hand tightening it and because of the situation like doing it uh, so this way I prefer having the the actual bolt itself facing up and the nut underneath um, due to the gap issue sometimes you have to have it the other way around which you'll see later when I take you around once I finish it so anyway that was just to show you the brackets going on so at that point the bracket should be on it only looked different in those previous images because I hadn't done it at that stage um, when I did the original video uh, I went back and realized things should be done better so in this instance I'm going ahead and, and, and adding more of the bolts and nuts to the frame and I'm using the drill with a hex bit and holding it down with the the spanner so that it's quicker and faster and this is me just checking to make sure that it is sturdy um, and it doesn't move uh, with my big fat weight so that's the back section mostly done uh, and you jet you have 88 bolts in total for doing the construction in this frame so this is the rear construction so you can see there the rear bar is very distinct it looks different obviously it doesn't have the led lights it has the same l shape and then it has the same bracket so it's simply mainly mostly just a rinse and repeat of the front way so add in the nuts uh bolts and nuts and grease them obviously each and every one needs to be greased you see me doing it all the time wiping my hands and then when they're hand tightened, each one of those uh, on that L shape, it allows you to actually move that L shape slightly in and out to accommodate the size of the frame. So that way you can see there I've managed to move it so it fits nicely on top of the brackets. You see there I'm, I'm greasing up uh, the bolts before I um, put it into each one of the uh, selected places and then I put the, nut and the, the washer and nut on the other side. As I mentioned, there's 88 and 88 corresponding washers. Now, sometimes you'll see that there are, uh, depending on where you are bolting them, some of the holes are, rather, are larger than other ones. So I recommend using the washers on the outside of those. Um, in other places, I push the washer on the other side because the nut looks nicer on the inside. So this is, I've already put the two railings on the top. They're really easy once you've placed the two front and rear braces, uh, brackets and places in. Then you can put the top railings in. And then there's two top nuts that you can easily do, put in place. And then you actually have to do uh, two nuts on both sides of those railings. So an end up... It ends up being like uh, one, two, five, ten, ten, ten bolts per pit railing. Um, and same with this side one, on these side ones, for the top ones that is, especially because it's taking most of the weight. This is the side railing on that, um, that right side that I'm doing at the moment. That only takes three. So you're putting one in on the side, one in on directly, let's say what, uh, horizontal, and then uh, sorry, th uh, this way, sorry, and then one this way towards myself. Uh, you'll see in the pictures a little bit better than me pointing, um, but yeah. And this is then putting the railing on the opposite side. Um, so you basically try and putting it midway up uh, to basically uh, obtain the best construction. So now we're having a look at it. Once it's finished its construction and all the bolts and nuts are placed in its place. So you can see here there are two nuts on the side railings on the on the outside and then there's one on the middle there's an extra nut below it that didn't need to be there i just put it there because i had extra ones and then you can see on the other side there's another two nuts there so one nut is in relation uh, both those nuts are in relation to holding the u-bolt in place and then you can see how those railings, they have two nuts really close to them, and then you can see one further away. The one further away is for the L shape, 
and you can see here the two nuts closest to that's for the L shape and then you can see the nuts on the top for the railings that helps hold it under together and this is a view underneath so you can have a look at all the nuts going in and the washers on uh, the underneath side of each of those bolts now you don't get enough to have to completely do every single bolt you wanted like I put in more bolts than I needed to because I had uh, an extra amount and I uh, had extra amount of washers so I was able to add more washers like I double washed both sides you don't always need to do that but um, if you can I'd encourage it and I, I will list in the description the link to my instructions that show you exactly what you, you get in your kit this is me just putting together, putting the soft cover back on. Um, it's just temporary until I can get the other one fixed. So now we're just having a look at the, the outside. You can see how, where all the nuts are placed. It takes a while to do them up. Some of them you can do with the, uh, with the drill and the Allen keys. So I'll list there as well, what Allen key size you need, what socket sizes you're going to need. Um, and all that information will be listed in the description as well as in the instructions so to help you make your job easier but yeah as long as you've got the minimum number there to make everything work that's all you really need you don't need to go add in the, the excessive extra ones that i've put in now were in there because i had an extra bag of bolts and nuts to make um, so i used them there's no harm in adding extra ones and then afterwards you put loctite on your on your bolts um, and nuts area so that uh, they don't come undone at all so uh, last longer so here we're looking at uh, those two arrows the red one points to the nut on top of the um, top railing and the other arrows were pointing towards the two that are sitting to the two side railings they take extra bolts uh, these are at the back those two bolts there they hold the L shape in the frame and the red holds the L shape in the frame, the white holds the uh, bracket in the frame. Uh, that's uh, the pink one story, basically talk, pointing towards the top frame one. The green one's the same, that L shape. Uh, the dashes were, were pointing towards the other one. Now this is actually indicating the two different bolts that I was talking about, the sizes. So one's short, one's long. Um, so depending upon the space you may have to have the nut facing up or the bolt facing up depending on the position so here again just just more pictures of the same where you can sort of see some of the, the nuts and how many are required particularly on these top railings you need two really close in and on the side railings you only need one um, on the on the sides and those are the side railings there this is just an image of what it looks like in your rear view mirror and how much it actually obscures your rear view so you do get some coverage there so anyway i want to say thanks to our patreon supporters because we had some new ones jump on board so big thank you for that if you want to look into that there's a link in the description uh, if you like the video please like and subscribe it helps our channel grow and uh, if you like what uh, you see then why not and i'll catch you on the next video and hope you found this helpful. Thank you.